My name is uh, Theodore de Haan. Um, I teach at the University of Leuven um, after having spent a career in Holland uh, before. And I went to the US, uh, more particularly to Harvard, uh, in the fall semester of 2010, not to teach. I'd done that three years before, but not on a Fulbright. This time I went uh, simply to do research. So I spent three months in the library uh, or sitting in a very small apartment from 8 o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock at night and beyond, reading and writing. <laughs> Perhaps uh, at variance with a number of uh, other, especially younger uh, applicants for a Fulbright, um, I knew and know the US quite well, having studied there well, 40 years ago, well, what a shame to admit that, <laughs> and having obtained a PhD there uh, in the early 1970s. Um, and ever since then, I'd been wanting to go back for uh, more extended periods of, uh, of research. Uh, unfortunately, I've had to wait until very late in my career to be able to avail myself of that. And the Fulbright um, is a very good opportunity, uh, I think at least for Belgian uh, professors, uh, because um, although to me personally the Fulbright itself did not bring any financial gain um, except for the uh, ease of the visa application and the admittance and things like that uh, and also the health insurance which uh, was included and which is quite substantial but uh, getting the Fulbright even on an honorary basis was um, occasion for the uh, Belgian National Science Foundation uh, to give me a grant that financially made it possible for me to spend three months in the US and to complete research I was already engaged on. Being a Fulbright scholar opens many doors. Um, you immediately are treated with uh, inherent respect by the people that receive you. Uh, usually universities are also quite keen on hosting uh, Fulbright uh, professors and grantees. Uh, because it's a very well-known program, of course, tied to uh, yeah, an illustrious senator uh, 40, 50, 60 years ago who did a lot to uh, improve relations between uh, the US, uh, Europe, and the rest of the world. Um, so you're coming not just as a scholar, you're also coming as a sort of ambassador, uh, academic, uh, but beyond that also cultural ambassador of your country. And that shows in the way you're being received. Um, most... Uh, places, certainly where I was, I mean the Boston area, has a very active Fulbright chapter uh, with a number of ex-Fulbright uh, professors, most of them Americans that went abroad on a Fulbright uh, scholarship, uh, very active in the Fulbright chapter. So they organize uh, social gatherings, uh, outings, uh, visits to museums and everything else. But they also uh, organize all kinds of informal gatherings where you can actually get to know Americans, uh, not just academics, but also, quote unquote, more ordinary Americans. Although, of course, everyone engaged with Fulbright and, and with the, the, the kind of uh, environment uh, Fulbright uh, people move in can hardly be called really ordinary. <laughs> Well, one of the things, of course, is that, and I think situation probably varies a little bit from one university to another, one country to another, but at least where I'm teaching, um, and especially if you're teaching in the humanities, it's very difficult to get leave time uh, to do research. Uh, student numbers are, are very high. Uh, pressure on teaching is uh, very high. So it's very difficult to uh, find any sort of extended period of time in which you can concentrate on research. Um, and the Fulbright um, is something that the university authorities usually do not dare uh, put aside when you ask them for leave or for replacement or whatever. Now obviously you still have to fend for yourself in the sense that you usually have to arrange replacement yourself with a junior colleague or with a colleague that is willing to take on your load or part of your load for the time you're going to be absent, uh, but then you can compensate by taking their load for instance the next semester or something like that. But it certainly makes it easier uh, to negotiate with the university authorities for a period of leave, be it a semester or, you know, I guess in rare cases, a, a year or something. But it also makes it easier, of course, to get uh, or to gain acceptance at the, the university of your choice, uh, 
in the United States. Now, for me, I wanted, I knew I wanted to go to Harvard. I'd been to Harvard before. I know people at Harvard, but still, going there as a Fulbrighter makes a difference, a big difference. I completed two books, actually. I co-edited one massive volume with uh, a full professor at, uh, at Harvard, who's head of the Department of Comparative Literature there, whom I've known for a number of years, uh, David Damrosch, um, and also with Jalal Kadir, who's at uh, Penn State University. We completed a 500-plus page uh, Routledge Companion to World Literature, which will be published in uh, October via Routledge. And on my own, I completed uh, another Routledge book, which is called A Concise uh, uh, Routledge History of World Literature, uh, which will also be out in October or November of this, this particular year. Uh, so for me, it was a very fruitful uh, stay. You know. Of course, you have to have done at least part of your research before you go there in order to make the most of the time you're there. But when you're there, uh, libraries are superb. Uh, colleagues are usually willing to listen, to share ideas, um, to read part of what you have written, uh, and to comment on that. And all, all these are invaluable. Now we can enkel zeggen dat voor wie van plan is om gedurende een bepaalde periode zich echt op het onderzoek te werpen, de Verenigde Staten en een Fulbright-beurs een unieke kans bieden.